Greetings, everybody. Turn your King James Bible to the book of Isaiah, chapter 61. This is a continuation of the commentary of the Isaiah series. Isaiah 61 is a very interesting chapter. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let's take a look. I think what I'm going to do is just read the whole chapter and then go back and show you the New Testament corresponding scriptures. Verse 1, Isaiah 61, 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, with the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old ways, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolation, desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. For your shame ye shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I the Lord love judgment. I hate robbery. For burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh herself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause her righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. All right, let's go back to Isaiah 61 and verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings, or news, unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And who are these captives? I believe they are the ones that were stuck in Abraham's bosom, which is, was a compartment in hell where Abraham was prior to Christ's death and resurrection. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. See, the prison was 
hell. That was Satan's prison. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Where is the companion verse? Luke chapter 4. Verse 14. Luke 4, 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. That's the Greek rendering of the word Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Listen carefully. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind. Physically blind? Spiritually blind? To set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also hear in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elysius the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman the prophet. I'm sorry, Naaman the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Now these were, you know, Elias, uh, Elijah uh, stayed with a widow and her food was going to run out, but for three and a half years, her, uh, her flour bin never ran out, or the oil. And, you know, there was a lot of lepers in Israel. But then Naaman came to the prophet and asked him what to do to be healed. And he said, well, go to the river, Jordan River, and dip, it, dip yourself in seven times. And he did it, and he was healed. Because even he had, he didn't believe it at first, but his servant told him, you know, well, what have you got to lose, basically? Go try it. So he believed, and he did, and he was healed. And the people were mad. Because, you know, most people just won't do what the prophets of the Lord say to do. Verse 29, And they rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow of the hill wherein their city was built that they might cast him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went his way. Wow. 
All right, Isaiah 61 and verse 6. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Where is this found? How about Revelation 1, 6? And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Revelation 5, 10. And hast made us unto our God kings and priests that we should reign on the earth. Revelation 20 and verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now in Isaiah 61 and verse 5. It says, And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Now, I'm not claiming to be a prophet, but I'll tell you what. I think that they're going to try to do a fake fulfillment of this prophecy when the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast arrives with the, uh, the tares that are over in the Middle East right now but that's my opinion I think they're gonna try to make that uh, look like a fulfillment of prophecy but I don't think so so all right let's go to verse 10 Isaiah 61 10 I will greatly rejoice in the Lord my soul shall be joyful in my God for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. Ah. As a bridegroom decketh herself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. All right. Huh. Where do we find this about robes? Revelation 7.14. Well, let's read Revelation 7, 9 first. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could lump, number, of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white, white robes and palms in their hands. Let's skip to verse 14, Revelation 7, 14. And I said unto him, so, you know, they ask, well, what are these with the white robes? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes, ah, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Ah, oh, okay. Right, right. And it was Revelation 7, 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence are they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 6.11 And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Revelation 3.5 He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Revelation 19.8 And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Hmm. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. All oh, blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. 
In Jesus' precious name, amen.